Would you pay $50 for cardboard? Would you pay $50 for a plastic Walmart bag? Didn't think so. That's a scam. That's a scam. That's literally what these clothing brands are doing. Hey y'all, I'm back and I've seen a lot of posts uh, the other day about how Fashion Nova once again stole designs from Hanifa. They couldn't even wait till March 1st. They couldn't even wait. They had to do it during Black History Month to a Black woman designer who is whose brand is fairly new and I'm pretty sure is an independent brand. Couldn't even wait till March 1st. They had to do it. I believe the dress that the design that they stole was a dress that Cardi B had been seen in. That dress is $300. I know that's a lot for most people in this economy. It is a lot for me too. <laughs> and the Fashion Nova version was $50. If you're unaware of who Hanifa is, Hanifa, um, their clothes have been worn by the likes of like Tracy Ellis Ross, Gabrielle Union, Cardi B, as I mentioned. Um, and if they haven't been worn by Tracy Ellis Ross or Gabrielle Union, I think that because it fits that persona. Like I, I very much see Hanifa's um, person as like unapologetic, bright, bold, colorful, glamorous, all of these things. Um, so like I mentioned, uh, Fashion Nova had stolen one of Hanifa's designs, and like I, like I mentioned, this has happened before, and I also want to say this isn't unusual. Like when you think of your Zara's, your H&M's, um, your Top Shops, this is just the name of the game in the fashion industry, but I'm just gonna say, it stings a little bit more during Black History Month. Like, couldn't even wait till March 1st, like I said, even though obviously it shouldn't be happening at all. And so, you know, every time something like this happens, you have a lot of uh, counterfeit, fake, dupe defenders that come around and say, hey, like clothes are expensive and I wanna buy those clothes and I can't afford them. So of course I'm gonna buy the copy version that is cheaper in price. I do want to say that it ultimately isn't cheaper most times anyway, because a lot of these people are just selling the plastic and cardboard versions of those things, but we'll get into that later. A part of me also finds it a little bit insincere because most people that are buying fast fashion are not below the poverty line. Um, and there was, and you don't have to be below the poverty line to be struggling financially or to be able to afford a $300, $300 dress. There was an article recently that disclosed that she, uh, the average she in buyer is making around 60k and spending about a thousand dollars a month month on Shein. can you believe that i've seen a story of a girl who in the past year had spent sixteen thousand dollars on fashion nova Ugh, like do you understand the am amount of sheer plastic that that person must be wearing and I'm not even here to defend like Gucci or Chanel or these like giant companies, no. But ultimately for me, the question comes down to why do you want to be seen in something fake? Why do you want to be seen in something counterfeit? My thing is when you're wearing a dupe or a fake, a lot of times you're actually just buying into or trying to play into the same systems that oppress you and you are trying to emulate a class that actively excludes you is the reason why you can't buy that dress or that bag. And so now instead of being like a human being with their own sense of personality and, you know, dignity, you are just a clone for said systems and class systems that we are actively trying to get out of here, okay? Here might be an unpopular thing, but in 2024, I think we should bring back a little bit of shame. Maybe a lot, but let's start with a little bit. A little bit of shame, I think, can be actually really generative because in this moment, at least, it could cause someone to say, well, why would I, why would I want to buy a fake lesser version, 
cheaper version, cheaper and quality version of something when I could find that quality by maybe spending a little bit more or finding that thing secondhand or maybe saying, hey, I like that and that's really beautiful and leaving it. Like there's so many ways to go about it before you make that purchase on Fashion Nova to buy the fake. For me personally, I think about the fact that I would rather wear articles of clothing that are of quality that reflect the things that I am inspired by. And I think that's where a lot of people might get lost because we're, we've been in this moment of aesthetic, 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 mob wife, goth, clean girl, grunge, uh, soft earth, whatever aesthetics, we, we put them on like costumes and that might just mean you're a theater person. Clothes do not make your identity. Your identity shapes the clothes that you wear and that requires a level of personality that requires a level in, of engaging with the things that you enjoy and indulge in and like to do. Every good designer, in my opinion, and this is coming from a person that hasn't studied fashion in any capacity, I'm very much a fashion is my passion type of girly. And I notice that the designers who I find interesting and that other people find interesting have a persona, a personality, a story of of the person that they are designing for. Rick Owens, Mark Jacobs, Jill Sander, um, Tom Ford, all of these very notable designers are have a person in mind when they are designing. They think about whether that person likes to go grab a coffee in the morning or have coffee in the evening and what type of bag that requires for that person. They think about whether that person works or not and what hours they work and so what type of shoes does that person wear. They think about where that person likes to go out and if they like to go out and if they're introverted, if they're extroverted and so what type of dress would that person wear. And so you might be thinking, girl, like, I love bright colors, I love femininity, that Hanifa dress is $300, it's still out of my budget. I get that, I really get that. And that is where I think a level of like patience, anti-consumerism and creativity is really key. Um, and I have an example, I really love the row. Do I have a row budget? Absolutely not. Like, absolutely not. <laughs> I do not. And I loved their wool coats. Um, and so I had three options, right? I could go bankrupt and buy that jacket. I could go to one of those kind of like secondary fast fashion spots and get a lesser version and cheaper version of that in cost and quality or I could really take a step back and think and engage. What is it that I like about this jacket? And I just seen a tweet the other day that was actually today that was so beautiful. I'm going to put it here because it's really my ethos right now in the way that I'm building my wardrobe. But thinking about what is it about that wool jacket that I love? Well, for me, I love that it was long. I really like the length of it. Um, I loved the quality. I loved um, the silhouette. I loved that it wasn't super fitted in any way. And so guess what? It took a little bit of time, but I ended up finding a beautiful black wool coat on Depop and it was like $30, 100% wool, $30. And that is how I'm able to take the things that I'm inspired by. That's just one example of taking something that I'm inspired by and engaging with it, seeing what I like about it, why I need it, and then having that patience and taking that time to find something that will be in my wardrobe for a really long time. And I paid a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the cost. It's secondhand. And so for me, another huge thing is 
to the best of my possibility, I want to know that my clothing purchases aren't made with cruelty. We can't evade the fact that to engage with fast fashion means that you are engaging in the economy of actual violence and cruelty, mostly to women and children, um, but a whole demographic of truly underprivileged, impoverished people. And that just can't be um, avoided. And so for me, I have a focus on sticking to secondhand, um, mostly because of the cost thing and because of the um, cruelty, the humanitarian part of it as well. And you know, when I was working a bit more, I was able to engage with smaller independent designers, potentially every now and again, um, smaller independent brands, not always designer. Um, and that was another way that I was able to do it. Um, but of course, right now I'm in a different spot. And so I can't, I, I definitely have a stricter budget and so for me that's just not a possibility i think the greatest thing anyone can learn as they're trying to develop their personal style that's really helped me and continues to help me is to be slow do a no buy i literally i did no buy january there were so many things i was trying to buy because my birthday was coming up and that's probably like when my consumerism really peaks and that didn't happen this year and it's like it was just a good way to just step back, just step back and really think about my wardrobe. And I was like, to be honest right now, I'm okay. Affordability, if you break it down, you are getting scammed. <laughs> Most of these fast fashion brands and even some designer, okay? Cause yeah are selling plastic, are selling cardboard. Would you pay $50 for cardboard? Would you pay $50 for a plastic Walmart bag? Didn't think so. That's a scam. That's a scam. That's literally what these clothing brands are doing when they are creating dupes and fakes. And they are relying on the fact that you're going to need a new dress in a year, you're going to need a new um, pair of shoes in two years because they're not making these things to last. I'm at a stage where I've been on this journey of like buying quality wherever I can for like the past decade. And I can tell you that there are clothes that I bought 10 years ago or close to 10 years ago that are still with me in amazing condition because I decided to stick to that like ethos and method of saying no, like it's gotta be 100% cotton. I don't want a synthetic blend this time. And it doesn't always happen, but the majority of my wardrobe is in that direction. And so I can see myself wearing these items for the next decade, for the next two, three, whatever. And I think that's so beautiful and so in line with all of these other beliefs I hold about the world and about care and about community because it's a personal expression and it's just like seeping out and so yes hanifa's dress might be 300 dollars, and that is out of budget for a lot of people but what is it that you like about that dress don't buy that 50 dollars version that would last you half the time maybe even a quarter of the time that the original thing would what is it about hanifa is it the brightness is it the length is it the silhouette where can you find that? Can you find it on Depop? Can you find it in other small independent designers within your price range? Can you find it in smaller brands within your price range that make quality? There's so many different ways to go about it. And you know, ultimately, I think 
slow consumption there's a pipeline that happens where you're like slow consumption slow consumption to the point where you're almost not consuming anymore because i am starting to do this thing where it's like i really love that and i appreciate that and i think that is so beautiful and i love that i can just appreciate it i don't need to have it with me i don't need to have it on me and there's that discernment that comes to play as well like i don't need to own everything i like i am capable and totally fine with appreciating an article of clothing that I will never own, appreciating the beauty in a garment that I am not gonna wear because it doesn't fit. Because it doesn't fit in my life, it doesn't make sense in one way or another, and that's just totally fine. And that is why you'll never catch me in a fake or in a dupe because that is the kind of mindset that I'm leading with. I want to move with care that's really what it comes down to right moving with care um what do y'all think what do y'all think let me know um fashion nova you couldn't even wait till march 1st you will not be seeing the pearly gates and uh yeah i'll talk to y'all later bye